Hey guys, my name is Tito. I make videos on personal finance on my other channel. On this channel, I talk about other things like today when I'll be reacting to episode 8 of season 7 of the best web series on YouTube, Skinny Girl in Transit. Where do I begin? Let's begin with you guys liking this video. First of all, <laughs> please like the video by clicking on the like button underneath the video and subscribe to my channel as well by clicking on the black subscribe button, especially if this isn't, if this isn't the first time you're watching one of my videos. By now, you're not a stranger, so please subscribe to the channel. It costs you nothing but like two seconds, okay? It's free of charge, totally free of charge. Wosilat. <laughs> Wosilat, like I said last week, right? I don't think Wosi is going to end this season still in school. I think she's going to drop out and find something else to do. Wosi is so unserious about school, and she said it herself on this episode that the whole school thing isn't just gelling for her. Imagine the effrontery of Wosi to ask the lecturer for a biro because, you know, she goes to his office, presents a fake a doctor's report. He says, fine, okay, you couldn't write the test then because you were ill. Sit down in my office. Here's the test. Write the test in front of me. And the silly girl asks her lecturer for a pen. <laughs> Wosi is not serious. Anyway, moving on from Wosi, uh, let's talk about Tiwa and Mide, you know, who have a spa day finally and they leave the baby with Auntie Derry. I'll come to Auntie Derry very soon. But at Tiwa and Mide, they have this spa day and they talk about their po the possibility of them migrating. And to be honest, I'm surprised that Tiwa is on board. I thought she'd be more reluctant or more resistant to the idea of leaving Nigeria because of her family. But she seems to be going along with it. I wonder what's going to happen that will make them change their mind. Because I strongly doubt that Tiwa and Mide will pack up their family and their home and move abroad. Even though they are going to do it progressively, according to what Mide said. Anyway, they go on the spa uh, day and they leave baby Tide with Auntie Dairy. Auntie Dairy is very unserious. And I share I've been saying it all this while that Dairy wants a man. It's not a baby she wants. She wants a man. She said it herself on this episode. She said that, that I don't want to raise a baby by myself, that this is hard work. I was like, eh, yeah, just knowing Abby. Which just further proves the point that all this while Dairy just wanted a baby for vibes. And she wants a man not necessarily a child, and she just wanted to use a child to fill that void in her heart, in her heart or in her life. Because now that um, Adeumi Suara, her love interest, is now in the picture, the need for a baby is not as much as it was before because, like I said, it's man that she wanted, not baby. Some of you had a few things to say <laughs> about Auntie Demi and baby today. Hilarious comments. Melanin, you are said... I hope they, they paid the baby you because that was some pure acting right there. Abu Helen says today is a paid actor. Moore says today understood the assignment. Jennifer Awarum says it's how Derry's brain has reset for me, right? She's, I mean, everything has just changed now that she has spent not even a whole afternoon, like a couple of hours with baby today. Derry can't cut it and she wanted to be a single mother. What a joker. Um, finally, Chioma Reginald says... The baby will be wondering when life got this hard. <laughs> this kind of anti self. <laughs> Shout out to the baby in that scene, man. Anyway, Shaliwa comes to rescue Auntie Derry in that scene to you know, help her out with the baby. And Shaliwa is another person that's not serious. Because ask me why. Mohammed is still contacting Shaliwa after all this time and after everything that has happened. Why has Shaliwa not blocked Mohammed on everything? Like on Snap, on Insta, on Twitter and like phone calls because he sent her a text at the end of the episode and it, from the look of on Shaliwa's face it seems like she's been communicating with Mohammed. I've I wash my hands of Shaliwa. The girl is stubborn and the painful thing is that there really are women or people like Shaliwa in the real in the world who they know someone is wrong for them but yet they're still entertaining these exes. I really don't know what's up with Shaliwa and her and Dr. Elijah have decided to be, be just friends, you know, and be platonic. I don't really mind that. I think Shaliwa needs time on her own to figure herself out. But the fact that she's still communicating with Mohammed, it's very worrisome. Let's read some comments about Shaliwa and Dr. Elijah. Osaz Obebo, and I think I know who this person is. She says that, Shaliwa, when we have started choosing Ashwebi colors, you are telling us that it's just platonic between you and Dr. Elijah. We reject it. Anyway, moving on to Auntie Dupe and Mr. Charles and AY. A very problematic situation indeed. Um, so, Mr. Charles breaks up with Auntie Dupe because AY doesn't like him. I understand where AY co is coming from, kind of, right? But I don't think and both Auntie Dupe and Mr. Charles handled that situation efficiently. 
they could have done a whole lot more to try and get AY to come on board and to, you know, accept their relationship. Because you can't afford to just throw away a relationship just like that in this day and age. Plus, I'm of the opinion that the older you get, the harder it is to find love. And here are these two middle-aged people in their 50s or 60s. They found each other, but yet they are throwing, throwing their relationship away so easily. It was very wrong of Mr. Charles to break up with Auntie Dupe. But what surprised me even more was that Auntie Dupe just, she didn't fight for the relationship. She didn't tell him to hold on, that let's talk about it. She just, she was, she seemed a bit proud and, you know, she didn't want to bring herself down to, to, appe you know, to appeal to him or to beg or to look like she's begging. Whereas, to be honest, ma'am, I mean, in this day and age, if you find something worth fighting for, fight for it. But aside from that, I don't think they explored their options. And that brings me to the question of the day. What do you guys think that they should have done? Or what would you have done if you were in either Auntie Dupe's shoes or Mr. Charles's shoes regarding AY and getting AY on board with the relationship? Personally, if I were Mr. Charles, I'd ask AY to pick one, iPhone 15 or PS5. Because I'd be damned if you want to tell me that AY will not come around you know, once you start buying him, showering him with gifts and, you know, just treating him really nice and all that. I mean, he's 18 or he's in his early 20s. Even me in my, at my big age, if anyone wants to buy my, <laughs> my affection, it's possible. I have a price. So they didn't even explore that option of trying to win him over with gifts or sitting him down. Because I think Auntie Dupe is still doing this old school type of parenting where there's no dialogue. Because if she sat AY down and told AY, look, AY, I'm your mother, yes, but I'm a woman and I have needs and all that. By the time she starts talking about I have needs, AY will say, ah, don't, please, don't tell me about your needs. It's okay. It's okay. You can start your relationship with Mr. Charles. I don't want to hear about your needs as a woman, you know? So I don't think they've even explored most of their options. Chema Reginald says that this breakup is so unnecessary. Why won't I want his mom to be happy? Now, someone responded to that, Toria Vige. She responded saying, not that, he's adopted, that's AY. So yes, he'd naturally be afraid of a new family member. Samantha Banda says, before we judge Ayo, we need to understand that he was adopted. Chances are there's a background story of his upbringing before he was adopted. Hence him feeling like his mother no longer loves him the same because of Mr. Darling. <laughs> she also says, P.S. I hope Mr. Darling, a.k.a. Mr. Charles, a.k.a. Tony Umez, um, comes back and says, I'm sorry, darling. <laughs> you people, there's something else. <laughs> With that, I guess we've come to the end of this week's reaction video. Yes, there was a stop between Didi, Editi, and N.I.E. Editi's daughter, but I guess we saw that coming. Didi is still fighting with Editi, rightly so. We'll see how that resolves, resolves itself in future episodes thank you guys so much for watching this reaction video please be sure to like this video once again especially if you didn't do it the first time by clicking on the like button underneath the video and subscribe to this channel as well by clicking on the black subscribe button on this channel i don't just re react to episodes of skinny girl in transit i also review nollywood movies you can click the card in the corner of the screen to check out some of the nollywood movies that i've reviewed in recent times after this i'm going to review the movie insecure which i saw this weekend um, it stars Beverly Naya, who is in Skinny Girl in Transit as Auntie Derry, or just Derry. Uh, also stars Efa Iwara and uh, Venita Akpofri. Anyway, I'm going to be reviewing that really soon. Once again, thank you guys for watching. Like, subscribe, share with other Skinny Girl in Transit fans. And I guess I'll see you guys next week for the reaction video of episode 9 of season 7 of Skinny Girl in Transit. Take care.